One of many demonstrations in central La Paz is taking place. Members of the public have walked the steep streets from the Altiplano in a show of defiance. Bolivian politics occurs not just in parliament but also on the streets. With the last two presidents expelled from the palace of Plaza Murillo, few are in doubt about where power lies. This country will only be transformed by a revolution. Many people say that we are going through changes right now, but those changes must not only be for a few. We have fought for so long, we can't stop now. We have to remember. We have to open our eyes and never close them again. We have to stand up and never fall again. It was with the help of forces like these that Evo Morales came into power in January 2006. He promised radical change. The indigenous groups that make up 80% of Bolivia's population would for the first time get a fair share of political power and a large part of Bolivia's natural resources would be nationalised. Now, after two years, the number of indigenous MPs has risen sharply. Decision-making has been shifted from the political elite that ruled Bolivia for centuries. Bolivia has traditionally rewritten its constitution on a regular basis, but with Morales mass party and the political left holding a majority in parliament for the first time, this constitution is said to be different from its predecessors. 34 years ago, we didn't have the right to enter the square, Plaza Murillo. We didn't have the right to enter the valleys. Although this palace and parliament across the street are both on indigenous Aymara territory, we didn't have the right to enter. This will be a rewritten, unconventional constitution, which is very promising. It is not designed to retaliate against anyone or to create another elite. We don't have the ambitions to subordinate anybody or to take revenge. We simply want everyone to enjoy the same rights. In El Alto, on the Altiplano overlooking El Paz, Evo Morales enjoys strong support. 4,000 metres above sea level, the giant suburb is home to more than 800,000 people and continues to grow rapidly as many Bolivians choose to leave the countryside. Most people who have settled down in El Alto belong to one of the indigenous groups and the political awareness they brought with them has been one source of the explosive changes of recent years. Holding demonstrations and blockading the road to the capital, El Alto has become a political force to reckon with. There are good intentions with this, the government of the people. It is of our class with dark blood. And I believe that there are now high expectations for Bolivia to change. And if the opposition don't let that happen, people will make clear where they stand. If they have to, they will bring Bolivia into civil war. The pressure on Evo Morales is immense. He must keep his vow of creating a just Bolivian society, but is being criticised for promising too much. The former government party, Podemos, warns that the expectations of the public are too high. The public is not adequately informed and believes that the constitution can change Bolivia overnight. There is a huge risk of people becoming frustrated and very disillusioned with this new constitution. It will not create jobs, it will not create wealth, it will not create investments and it will not improve the lives of ordinary Bolivians. In August last year, an assembly was set up to form the draft of a new constitution, and on the 6th of August this year, a referendum was scheduled to bring the charter into force. The assembly became a forum for debate where many of Bolivia's old conflicts were revisited. Disagreement regarding agrarian reforms, autonomy and nationalisation eventually forced Morales to extend the deadline to the 14th of December. Today the country seems more divided than ever and the desired unity appears distant. The assembly was gathered last week for the first time in months, with commentators saying that the delays represented deliberate obstructions by the opposition. Political dissent at the assembly now includes debate over La Paz's future as a legitimate capital. States in favour of autonomy want the system of two parallel capitals scrapped and all government power to be centred in Sucre. Two million people gathered on the streets of La Paz to furiously demonstrate against what they saw as an attempt to shift power from the indigenous Altiplano to the Hispanic lowlands. What is power? What is territory? That I still don't understand. I asked the national leaders of the indigenous groups for an explanation. And power, they told me, belongs to the majority. 
to the Aymaras, to the Quechuas and the ethnic groups of the eastern Bolivia. We want political power in order to regain our territory, because territory is the soil that we plough. I mean, land is land, but our territory makes up all the national resources. If we sit on this lump of gold, if we have all this wealth, and if we have these natural resources, then why is Bolivia so poor? Why can't we be better than other nations? Why aren't we an exporting country with a value proportionate to our resources? It is because of the failings of our former governments. Our vision is that in the future we will change radically. We want to be like other nations. But critics argue that political instability and Morales' nationalizations have made Bolivia less attractive to foreign investors. They warn that this will have a negative impact on the economy. Although revenues from natural gas have risen from 5 to 13 percent of the GDP, extraction is still being made in cooperation with foreign companies. The Bolivian state-owned oil producer, YPFB, lacks both the competence and equipment to run the extraction alone. And therefore, critics say, Bolivia is practicing false economy when it cuts foreign companies' share of revenues from the natural gas. Bolivians will pay the price for an idealizing demagogic government that is totally irresponsible. The separation of the state has been going on for many years, from colonization to the republican period to the neoliberal era. It is impossible to reverse this in a few days, a few weeks or months. It is a cultural, ideological and pragmatic struggle, a struggle for principles that will continue.